welcome to this video session in this video session we're going to look at python implementation of fractional knapsack problem let us see what outcomes have been planned for this session for this session at the end of this session uh, the students who are watching this are expected that they will be able to provide python implementation for fractional knapsack problem so before we move to python uh, uh, coding we will be using pycharm id and uh, it is is the expectation that the the audience who are watching this video uh, have a uh, some fundamental knowledge of python language and they have a latest stable pycharm id uh, community edition is enough for our needs okay uh, before we go for any hands on uh, on uh, implementing algorithms in python it's very crucial to know the time complexity of containers and collections in python because when we implement a uh, pseudo code algorithms what we do is we, we write a pseudo code for algorithms and we may uh, we 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 calculate the time complexity of algorithms based on the pseudo code we, which we write or in, in 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 general the algorithmic representation but often when we implement those algorithms in languages for example we are we are using python but in some cases it could be c java or even other language so it most developers what they do is they they just uh, assume or they rather than saying that they will just presume that a specific operation in python uh, for example maybe it's a sorting or maybe for searching or maybe finding a min element in a list or a, a specific container in a python they assume that it's it's of uh, specific complexity uh, and most often this always results into a bad program implementation <clears throat> so it's very important that we understand what are those operations and uh, what is the time complexity of those operations implemented in python's uh, c python runtime so we will go through the standard uh, time complexity manual of python uh, wherein uh, it lists you the time complexity of various crude operations on containers and collections uh, from the python's uh, standard library and and uh, collection module as well apart from that we'll also look into a module in a python called as heap uh, q module which lets me build min heaps and also which also lets me uh, Im have a priority queue implementation in python so we'll also touch that aspect as well and we'll see what exactly will be the complexity of any heap or a priority queue uh, constructed using those models in the python so let me switch to the uh, python's time complexity manual <coughs> okay so now we are on a page where it's a standard python docs uh, module where we where the python uh, implementation it's a python's standard uh, module here where you can see here that these complexities are based on the current implementation of c python and this is for python 3 we are looking at so now when you look at this it what I was talking about as a more important aspect which you need to concentrate when you give a Python implement to the algorithm is these complexities. For example, if you take a list and to the list, if you add an element uh, append at the uh, end of that list, then the complexity of that operation is O of 1. So under the average case. So this is uh, this matters so much for a theoretical consideration, but when you are writing an algorithm for a practical consideration, uh, it's very important to also understand the amortized worst case complexity. But as of now, we will slightly skip this. We will more talk about these complexities. So the append is O of one, and you can see that uh, sometimes when I insert this append at uh, the beginning, then uh, suddenly the complexity is. Uh, uh, very high so you can see here pop last it means that removing last element from the list is o of 1 but popping any of the middle element in the list popping any of the middle element in the list its complexity is o of n so you can see that uh, in our algorithms implementation if we do this operation then we have to consider that operation as o of n not as o of 1 be, that's most misconception which developers or, or the novice beginners who begin with the uh, language they keep into mind that okay their algorithm and the program has equal complexity no it depends upon how well you correlate the pythons or any language internal implementations with your algorithms derived complexity 
so since uh, our implementation python implementation of algorithm which we're going to see the hands on it depends on python it's very important that we look at this ch uh, chart so this is for the list and you can see here if you want a double ended queue then this is the best data structure which, which lets you append left append right which lets you insertion and deletion at the, both the end of the container and that's a o of 1 that's a dq so that's this is what is recommended and one more operation which very we, we very frequently we use is a sort operation and searching in a list so when you search in a list for example x in a egg, s then it's also o of n finding minimum and maximum of a list is also n but uh, you can see that surprisingly getting the length of list is o of 1 quite contrary to the major uh, developer perception that finding the length of a list will be an operation it, it, it's a, it's a, it's the beauty of python which does give you the length of uh, list in o of 1 so this is set so you can see that whenever you take a set symmetry difference or when you say whether the element is present in a set or not it's a o of 1 so most pro most often we look uh, we we need such operations in algorithm implementation and these are the dictionaries as you can see that average case dictionaries is always o of 1 uh, whenever you look get item set item and delete item it's important that we much worry about this but you can see that amortized worst case complex is o of n okay so fine uh, we'll not give much attention to this but we'll only rely on this assumption okay so iterating dictionary is n and copying the dictionary is o of n don't think that creating just a copy of dictionary is one operation that no whenever if you create any copy of a dictionary then it is o of n so by looking at this i think that one of the another very important thing is uh, sort which we very frequently we use uh, in our algorithm as you can see for sorting the complexity is o of n log n and it's it's somewhat based on uh, team sort implementation very important note that the sort built in sort whether it is sort or sorted it's always n log n in python so this is for the time class of basic operations as we have said we are using another module we will be using another model heap q we may use it uh, most algorithms do, do require you employing priority queue and heaps so this is a module and this gives you a min heap representation and it's based on the textbook heap algorithms so the apis differs from textbook so it gives you uh, zero index min heap uh, based textbooks implementation and uh, so you can see that this uh, this is almost uh, like heap dot sort so it, it's a, a kind of uh, heap array based heap implementation given to you uh, the general complexity of this is n log n uh, all the standard heap related operations what the retrieval insertion of log n and uh, maintaining heap is n log n so this is also very beneficial when you want to implement uh, heap uh, in algorithm specifically when you talk about optimal file merge pattern or uh, uh, some other kind of algorithm which requires to maintain a heap or tree based structure so this is a program to solve a fractional knapsack problem as uh, you know that a general fractional knapsack problem tries to minimize or uh, sorry it tries to maximize the maximum profit for a given uh, sack capacity so in order to solve that uh, we have to sort the items in the ratio of profit to weight so this is how we do it and i have just taken a custom function to define sorting logic but later i have replaced it with the lambda one so you can either use a lambda or you can directly give the sorting logic here so any anything works but i have preferred here to write a lambda so the let m denote the maximum sac capacity and uh, let the total price be zero that's what the total price we have to calculate at the end so the list of items is represented in this way for example this is one item and here it is p comma w it means it's a profit of item one and weight of item one profit of item two weight of item two so on this goes so i'm representing in form of p comma w so now as you all know that if you want to solve it uh, solve the fractional approach and if i want to maximize the profit i always tend to take an object which has the uh, highest amount of profit to weight ratio 
So in Python, what I do is I use a sorted method. I want to sort this. Yes, I'm sorting it. And now since the sorting order is slightly different from the natural ordering of this list elements, what I do is I provide a key to it and I make sure the key D is nothing but item of zero by item of one, which means the profit by weight. So appropriately you can sort it based on the ratio of profit to weight. And I want this in descending order. So I give a uh, reverse key is equal to true. This makes sure that this items list is sorted uh, in descending order of profit to weight ratio. And once I done with that step, only thing you are left with is you need to take each item from the sorted item and make sure you calculate the uh, M. You recalculate the, uh, keep on rechanging the uh, SAC capacity so that uh, you will uh, entirely either you end up exploring all the sorted items or maybe you will end up exceeding the SAC capacity. So either of that conditions you will be coming out of this and then you can print the total price which is possible which is maximum possible total price under the given conditions of M is equal to SAC 15 and given item list. So now if you work for this problem let me execute this. So if you execute this, you get 26 and 26 is the right answer. So later on, you can pause the video and you can uh, work on this and you can verify if it's the right answer. So this is uh, implementation of a fractional knapsack program. And uh, you can uh, try to guess what exactly is the algorithm design paradigm being using that. And once again, I somewhat, I want to maximize. So I look at some uh, greedy like approach. You can think on this and uh, you can uh, try to guess what exactly is the design algorithm uh, paradigm used for this problem. Okay, now that we have seen the Python implementation for a fractional knapsack problem, uh, can you guess what design paradigm we have used uh, for this implementation? You can pause the video at this point and try to guess the answer. Uh, but the right answer for this uh, question is that we have used greedy approach. So that's it for this video. 